Welcome out to church, folks. We're going to uh, worship our God on stage. Welcome out if you're on the live stream and um, you can sing with all your heart, but the, uh, the congregation's all got their masks on, they're going to hum along. We're going to sing on the stage. We're singing some mighty king. Rule the nations with your righteousness. It's all along. Rule the nations with your righteousness. Rule the kingdoms with your holiness. You pray your strong arm. Thank you. 
for the gospel into our friends and into our family, the people that we know and that we love and that God's put in our heart, that God use us and God use our prayers and we can pray for these folks right now. Let's continue just to pray for people that are going through a hard time right now. For whatever reason, we want to pray for healing for uh, Shane's uncle. He has uh, cancer. We want to pray that uh, God would save him, God would heal him, God would help him at this stage. We want to pray for this service that God would speak to hearts, God would help people by the preaching of the word of God. I believe that that's possible. Whatever's on your heart right now, let's take time, let's pray, let's invite the Holy Spirit, have his way in our service tonight. Let's pray, Uh, Josh is going to open us in a word of prayer. Father, we're so blessed, God, to be able to come into the house of God. We're praying, God, for leaders in our community, in our government, God, in our nation. Lord, leaders in our fellowship, God, of churches, God, of grace, Pastor Elliot and uh, Pastor Walsh, Lord God, Pastor Farrell, Father, we lift them up, Pastor Mitchell, God, we thank you, Lord, for our uh, Lord, the grace upon their life, God, fruitfulness upon their life, Lord, blessing and favour, God, wisdom and leadership, Lord God, I praise you, Father, God, moving in power, God, in our service, God, I thank you for your presence in this place tonight, have your way in us, Lord God, God, speak to every person, God, people on the Live stream, God, the people in the people, God, in the building tonight, God, ministry and presence, bring healing, God, bring hope, Father, God, bring victory, God, bring breakthrough, we ask, Lord, God, every area of our lives, every area, God, draw people, God, we come before you tonight in praise and worship, God, we lift up right now Shane's uncle, we claim right now by the blood of Jesus, healing of this cancer, God, it will disappear overnight in Jesus' name, God, this whole situation will be an opportunity for Shane to share the gospel in her family, God, and that you would propagate that. I pray your hand will be upon this service tonight, God. You would speak to us a word in season and minister to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Um, let's find our seats. Good to have you in church. Good day. Uh, you join with us in the live stream. This is our, um, uh, you know, I love church uh, Sunday. And uh, it's actually Wednesday night if you're on the live stream, but uh, it's good to be in church. It's good to be in church on the live stream. If, uh, if that's what you're uh, able to do at this stage, God bless you um, in that and through that. There's a uh, Red Faces night coming up on Sunday night. It's a 70 th- 70s theme outreach. And uh, if there's, uh, you know, uh, one visitor come, if there's two visitors, if there's five, if there's ten, we're putting it on that people can be blessed, can be helped, and uh, we're prepared to do something to let the gospel be known and uh, for people to come out to something. And so praise God for that. There's a sign-up sheet. You can contact Ben. Um, if you're not here to put your name on the sign-up sheet, but I encourage you to do that. Let him know that you're prepared to uh, be involved and uh, be part of an act for the uh, Red Faces Night 70s theme Red Faces next Sunday, 6.30pm. Half past 10 every Sunday morning, half past 6 Sunday evening, 7 o'clock on Wednesday night, regular church times. Encourage you, you can be the difference for someone. You can invite someone to come out and make a difference in their life um, because Jesus will make a difference in their life as you bring them out to church. Uh, Coming up on the 7th, a couple of weeks away, Sunday week, uh, AM and PM services, Pastor Scott McLean, before him and his family head off to uh, Poland. That's we have a Polish flag behind us. We have an Australian flag. We have a church in Hornsby. We have a, uh, a New Zealand flag. We have a church in Auckland where uh, we're planting the McLeans or uh, 
co-laboring together to send them over there. Um, that's a Polish flag. And thank God for the opportunity for the gospel to be spread yes. through your prayers, through your giving, through the work that God's done in your life and for faithful people that have uh, sown in that way. Thank God for that. Monday the 8th, there's a men's deed. Monday week in Parramatta. Praise God. We want to take an offering. And uh, I, again, I commend people every service. Really do appreciate people that want to give to the things we've got. People are investing. People are spending. There's a lot of money out there. A lot of people going through difficult times. There's a lot of people are doing really, really well. And uh, people are investing in all sorts of things, the things that are important to them, the things that are, you know, make a big deal, whether it's food, whether it's perfume, whether it's, uh, you know, a car, whether there's so many things, not necessarily, uh, you know, any of them bad in themselves. But the fact is, if the kingdom of God is close to our heart, if it's important to us, it's something we should be moved in our heart. And I'm going to invest in that, my time, my prayers, my efforts, and my money and my finance. And, and I praise God for people that have that revelation and that continually do that in tithes and offering and putting God first in their life in the arena of finance. And it makes all the difference in the world. Your giving has facilitated uh, the, the, the flags and the flags, what they represent as churches, what they represent as people hearing the gospel and people ongoingly hearing the gospel. That's a powerful thing. Thank God for that. We're going to take an offering and uh, going to get uh, Ben to pray over this offering. Thanks, Ben. Lord God, I thank you for the opportunity to give into your kingdom and that the gospel can go forward into all the world, Lord God. Lord, I pray your blessing upon the ties as it does its work in your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. We want to look again into the Word of God and uh, uh, in a different angle. We looked this morning at how much, uh, thank God for His church, thank God for our church, thank God for the flavour of the church, thank God for the focus of the church, thank God for the fellowship that we have with God and with people, thank God for all those things. I'm going to pray so, uh, preach something different. And uh, in a sense, it's on prayer, but it's just about prayer specifically when we really, really, really need to pray. And it's prayer in the darkness. And, uh, you know, the Bible says that God has called us out of darkness into his wonderful light. Isn't that a wonderful scripture? Amen. Thank God for that. 1 John 2 8 says the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. Another great scripture. And praise God. But one thing the Bible reveals about God is that he again and again and again brings light to overcome the darkness. That's a key in our prayers. That's a key when we find ourselves in a dark place where there's dark clouds on the horizon, where there's dark situations in somebody that we know and love and care about. We want to pray for them. That We understand that God wants to bring light. God wants to overcome the darkness. And having that mindset, that understanding can fuel our faith and can help us with our prayer. I want to read Acts 16, well-known verses to many people, but a powerful story. Let's pick it up, Acts 16, 16. One day, this is the New Living Translation, one day as we were going down to the place of prayer, here's Paul and Silas and their companions, they're going to pray as they normally did. One day as we're going down to the place of prayer, we met a demon-possessed slave girl. She was a fortune teller who earned a lot of money for her masters. She followed Paul and the rest of us, shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God and they have come to tell you how to be saved. This went on day after day until Paul got so exasperated that he turned and said to the demon within her, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And instantly it left her. Verse 19, her master's hopes of wealth were now shattered. So they grabbed Paul and Silas and dragged them before the authorities at the marketplace. The whole city is in an uproar because of these Jews, they shouted to the city officials. They are teaching customs that are illegal for us as Romans to practice. A mob quickly formed against Paul and Silas and the city officials ordered them stripped and beaten with wooden rods. They were severely beaten and then they were thrown into prison. The jailer was ordered to make sure they didn't escape. So the jailer put them into the inner dungeon and clamped their feet in the stocks. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening. 
Verse 26, suddenly there was a massive earthquake and the prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors immediately flew open and the chains of every prisoner fell off. The jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open. He assumed the prisoners had escaped, so he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted to him, stop, don't kill yourself, we're all here. The jailer called for lights and ran to the dungeon and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas and he brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? What a powerful story. So much in that story. We could uh, preach 10 sermons on that. I want to look at a couple of things with you tonight. And the first thing I want to consider with you is that this is a clear cut assault of the enemy. Yeah, very clear, very plain. And I like the New Living Translation, the plain use of the, uh, uh, the words there. The prince of darkness seeks to divert you, to frustrate you. Paul and Silas are about kingdom business. They're about the gospel. They're telling people how to be saved. They're about prayer. They're on the way to prayer. They do that every day. They're praying. And there's an unhappy demon. Let me ask the question, is there any other type? <laughs> There's an unhappy demon that possessed a girl. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God. They're unhappy because these men are servants of the Most High God. They've come to tell you how to be saved. They're, they're, it sounds like she's saying the right thing, but, but the demon in her is ticked. He's frustrated. He's trying to upset Paul and, and frustrate their efforts, trying to turn the people off somehow. And, uh, you know, and, and it's crying out. And the demon's trying to vex them, trying to frustrate them day after day, following them and hassling them through this girl. She's demon-possessed. She's there. She's a slave. She's been taken advantage of by people and by the demonic. And the devil's able to use her and her voice box and her words to try to frustrate and hinder and stop the work of God. And for a moment, for a season there, it's 100% successful. It looks like, you know, the devil's strategy, you know, 101, and, and, and that's just to cause an angry mob, to cause uh, they get the authorities involved, secular authorities that have no idea of spiritual uh, realities uh, many times, and uh, get them involved to shut the church down, shut the witness down, shut the outreach down. And I've seen it happen. So the demon gets the boot. Okay, still not happy. But the demon gets the boot. Paul just, he, he has enough and he goes, well, this is frustrating here. Um, this girl following us around, shouting these things. Come out of her right now. And the demon does. The demon leaves her life because greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. We have authority over the demonic. And, uh, you know, he agitates the slave masters. And then suddenly the thoughts of going ping, ping, ping in their head. And what it is, is the demon say, you've lost your money. You've lost your influence with this slave girl. What are you going to do? And, and then you better do something. You better make a, make a problem for these men. You better get them arrested. You better, and, and, they, and they're probably thinking it's just their thought process. Oh, I don't think it's just their thought process. I think it's a demon spirit stirring them up. They in turn stir up the crowd and the demons, you know, firing fiery darts and thoughts into people's heads. And all of a sudden the whole town is in uproar and suddenly the, you know, man, let's, let's have these guys beaten, let's strip them naked and bash them with sticks. It's, like, it's a little bit extreme, but what were they doing? They were on the way to prayer and they were telling people about Jesus. But something radical has happened in the spiritual realm. There's, there's demonic activity and all of a sudden, because it doesn't make sense the, 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 the kickback against what they're doing. You know, we, we've had, you know, overseas in India at different times, what are you doing? You're in the police are there. What are you, what are you doing? So we're helping people. You know, we've come down to help this family. And they're, they're, they're almost speechless because they're agitated. They're upset. People are agitated. Why are these people so upset? It's spiritual. It's a spiritual situation. Agitates the slave masters in the whole city. The master's hopes of wealth were now shattered. So they grabbed Paul and Silas, dragged them before the authorities at the marketplace. The whole city's in an uproar because of these Jews. They shouted at the city officials. And it's this huge drama going on and if you're about kingdom business sometimes you will find very obviously and clearly and sometimes it's a bit more subtle than this but the demonic realm will oppose you if you want to do some outreach on the streets if you want to win somebody to christ if you want to witness to somebody in the workplace you'll find there's some opposition 
If you just even want to start attending church, you'll find that Satan opposes God's will for your life. And you'll find that if you step into some form of ministry, the devil will oppose you stepping into some form of ministry. You doing the will of God will be opposed. These men, Paul, Silas and the companions, they're doing the will of God. If you're witnessing, the devil will try to, you know, invoke fear in your mind and, you know, what will they think? And they don't want to hear. And, I mean, there's somebody snarling at us and dangerous. And, you know, well, yeah, we've been down hell. There's people following us. We've been down the street. There's people yelling at us, wanting to punch us and all sorts of things. If you begin to read or study the Word of God, again, there'll be hindrance come to you. There'll be di- diversion and distraction to your life. If you begin giving, I'm just going to start giving. I'm going to give. I feel like God wants me to tithe or God wants me to give this amount or do this, you'll find things will start to break down. It's like, what's going on? This is weird. Not always, but it's like there's opposition to this. And if the demonic realm has sway over your boss, you might just find that you lose your job or lose some hours or, you know, don't worry, God's got a better job. You know, God can provide. He's Jehovah Jireh. He will provide for you. But I've seen it happen countless times. People begin to walk into the, 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 the... the will of God and begin to step up to do the will of God. And just like Paul and Silas here, all hell breaks breaks loose. And it's very clearly a spiritual problem. Prayer is a major target. And so why is prayer a major target? We know why prayer is a major target because it's vital. It's a lifeline for us to God. It's a true expression of our faith to God and, and faith moves mountains. And, uh, and, and it's a key as we intercede for other people and situations that uh, things begin to change, things begin to happen. From the moment you started praying, Daniel, there's been a spiritual drama going on, there's been great opposition going on, but your prayers have gotten through. And so the devil wants to come against our prayer. One man said prayer is key. Satan and the demonic realm is overcome through prayer. One man said the power of God is released through prayer. That's why David prayed morning and early and evening and noon. And David prayed. David understood, man, I need to pray. If I'm going to be the king, if I'm going to lead anybody anywhere, if I'm going to be God's man, if I'm going to be God's ambassador, if I'm going to do something for God, um, I, 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 need, I need to pray. That's why Jesus prayed very early, Mark 1.35 in the morning, while it was still dark. Jesus got up, left the house and went to a solitary place where he prayed. And Luke 5, 16, Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. He went and did business in prayer with God. That's why Paul and Silas prayed. That's what we read about in the text. These guys, they're they're men of prayer. If we're going to bring the gospel, there's going to be some form of opposition. Wherever they went, did you notice that in the book of Acts? Wherever they went, there was a riot. Wherever they went, Paul escapes by the skin of his teeth. It's incredible. The the agitation and the stronghold of the enemy is threatened. The strong man of the city is threatened by Paul and his companions, who they were at the time, um, because they're praying and they're witnessing. See, God intends for us to pray daily when they ask Jesus, teach us, Lord, how to pray. He said, pray in this manner. Um... Give us our daily bread. And so it's a daily prayer, isn't it? Otherwise you wouldn't say daily bread. You wouldn't pray that once a week, would you? <laughs> so, man, I start for most of the week. Six day fast and pray on Monday. Acts 3, 1. Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the three o'clock prayer service. Acts 10, 9. The next day is... Cornelius' messengers were nearing the town. Peter went up on the flat roof to pray. It was about noon. We read through the book of Acts. People were praying all the time, early, late, lunchtime in the evening, at three o'clock, whatever it was. The text says, one day as we were going down to the place of prayer. This was an everyday thing. They were going down. That was their common thing. They went down to the place of prayer. This is another day. They're going down to the place of prayer. The New Testament's got a lot of examples, different types of prayer. There's sickness. Call the elders, lay hands, pray. Prayer with fasting. If you're looking for dominion, if you're looking to break the powers of demonic spirits and possession, 
you know, spiritual strongholds. You know, there's urgent prayer meetings organized. Peter's been arrested. He's in prison. Get the church together. Let's all gather and pray. And, you know, somebody is in crisis. Somebody's having an operation. Somebody's had a tragedy. Let's let's get together and pray. And we do a lot of that. Obviously, we've been in lockdown through, uh, you know, our WhatsApp uh, uh, connection and uh, by, you know, message, message and all those things. But we can gather with people, gather together with God's people and pray. It's powerful. We need to be able to do that. We have daily bread prayers. It's daily, it's regular, it's for provision, it's for all the regular things we pray about. We have evening prayers and hopefully our evening prayer is uh, we spend a little bit of time, some time in prayer each day, maybe mull over the day, talk to God about it, talk about the next day, whatever it is. For some people it's let Johnny and Susie have sweet dreams and don't let the bed bugs bite. And uh, maybe that sort of prayer. And, and the devil's obviously trembling in his boots when he hears people praying like that. And I'm being, you know, uh, making a bit of a joke about it. But seriously, evening prayers are powerful prayers. Paul and Silas, their prayers were a real threat. Their ministry was a real threat. Their witness was a real threat. So Satan opposed them. Our prayers, our united prayers, our morning prayers, our prayers before service, even our prayer, our brief prayer during the service, our prayer at the end of the service at the altar, it's a threat and therefore Satan will at times very much, he'll oppose that. He'll try to vex you, he'll try to condemn you, he'll try to divert you, he'll try to hinder you in some way. The text says this went on day after day. One commentator said this, he said, and this happened for many days, that is, on many successive occasions, when on their way to their usual place of prayer. What a commentator say, that's what they were doing day after day, they just had a routine, they'd go and they'd pray together, they'd head into the marketplace, they'd witness to people, and this girl's turning up, following them around, demonically inspired. Paul and Silas had a habit of prayer. And their habit of prayer meant that when they were in a dark place, as we read through the text, they end up in a very dark place. When they were in a dark place, their habit of prayer came to the came to the top. We need to pray. They had a habit of worship as well, so we need to worship God. They had a relationship with God through their prayer life. It's like we need, we need to pray and we need to, you know, speak to God about this. And uh, you know. Their habit of relying on God and the relationship that they'd gained in prayer won the day. That's powerful. That's one reason why we pray, because when you really need to pray, if you don't have a habit of prayer, that's why when we need to pray and, and, and a crisis comes and, and it's like we don't have an understanding of God and relationship with God, we can doubt God in that place and, and not confidently pray and draw near to him as they did. And so let's look secondly at the need to pray in the darkness and a you know, common misconception or maybe it's just a, a hope um, is that God will always keep us from dark situations. Well, I'll live for God and I'll do my part and I'll do what's right and God, you can just keep me from all you know, the bad stuff. And uh, that would be nice, but Jesus says the opposite. He says, look, there's going to be some tribulations, there's going to be some trials, maybe some persecution, there's going to be some opposition. You have an enemy. And so the devil doesn't just want to distract us from prayer or church or reading the Bible. He wants to destroy the work of God in our life. He wants to destroy the work of God through our life. He doesn't just want a prayerless church. He wants no church at all. The devil wants you to be sick and oppressed in your mind and anxious and fearful and faithless and hopeless and broke. We could go, that's the devil's plan. That's not God's plan at all. And in our text, there's a point in the text, if you just stopped it right there, you'd go, Paul's ministry hasn't just been hindered, it's been at a complete end. There's a very good chance right here in this inner prison, it's like Paul's not coming out alive. Paul's not going to, the, the, the ministry's over, Paul. It's, it's all over. That's what it looked like at one point there. A mob quickly formed against Paul and Silas. And the city officials ordered them stripped and beaten with wooden rods. They were severely beaten. And then they were thrown into prison. The jailer was ordered to make sure they didn't escape. So the jailer put them into the inner dungeon and clamped their feet in the stocks. It's amazing how Satan can raise up a mob. You know, those flash mob things you see on YouTube and stuff. The devil's feet raises up an angry mob. 
because he's angry, he's not happy, he's got all these other people, they're, they're not happy either, and he's influenced their mind and affected them, and he's able to rally them to his cause and get a you know a, an opposition team happening quickly. And you know, and it's incredible how that for us, as we live for God, as we really want to live for God, suddenly there's there's a mob that's against us. It's like it can be old friends, it can be our own family. Suddenly it's a, uh, it's, a it's a lynch mob in your own family, and they, they've they've come against you. And it's just like, what's going on? Usually Christmas time and great time parties and you know, weddings and fun times like that. So it's a mob, and they're against me, and it's demonic. Because because all I'm doing is what? What was I doing wrong again? I'm not doing anything wrong. I actually love these people and I'm praying for them and I'm just living as a Christian and accusations come. And, and so they're there and even other Christians at times can be part of the devil's angry mob and opposition to what God's calling us to do. And the devil wants to oppose what God's calling us to do. Lots of problems can come against us. And the result is, is that Paul and Silas, they're beat up. They've been beaten severely. And we could, we could go right into what that means severely, but I think we know what severely means. They've been badly beaten. They're locked up in a dark place, and that's the devil's aim. He wants to beat us up. He wants to frustrate. He wants to wear out the saints of God. He wants to vex us. He wants to hinder us. He wants to cause us to be all beat up, and, and maybe we be, begin to lack faith, and, you know, we don't want to pray now. We don't want to come to church or read the Bible, much less tell anyone about Jesus, and, you know, hey, become a Christian and get all beat up, and, you know, it's like we, we become negative, and, and we can be affected by these situations really really adversely and this story is in the Bible to say you don't have to get defeated you don't have to be overwhelmed by the dark times you don't Amen. then make sure they don't escape make sure these men don't escape they are dangerous don't let them escape and get back to the place of prayer <laughs> You know, back to the place of fellowship and you know, keep them clamped up here in this dungeon and keep them in the dark with no light and no hope and uh, just pain and, and they're powerless and just keep them in there and that's the devil's will for their life right there. That's exactly, and whether it's physically or just mentally or financially or phys- health-wise or you know, uh, relationship, the devil just wants you all clamped up and in a dark place and then you've lost confidence and you've lost freedom and you've lost liberty and uh, you know, make sure they don't escape. And he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. I was reading one commentator was writing about the inner prison and maybe you've heard something in the past but uh, I found this interesting. The Roman public prisons had an outer prison and uh, behind this, the inner prison was a veritable jung- uh, dungeon. Had no window or outlet except this door, which when closed absolutely shut out light and air. This apartment was the place into which Paul and Silas were cast in Philippi. The utter darkness, the heat and the stench of this miserable place in which the inmates were confined day and night is often dwelt upon by the martyrs and their biographers. People died in these places. People died there. There was a stench of death about these places. People were martyred in these places. And people died in unspeakable suffering and horror in these places. Do you think Paul and Silas didn't know that? Do you think that they didn't know where they were being led? And can you imagine the, the assault the fiery darts of the enemy. Look what I'm look what I'm doing to you now. Look where you're headed. Look what's going to happen to you. And and but they weren't open to that. They just took thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ. I'm not going to think that. I'm not going to believe that. That's not. It's not. This is not the will of God. And they had a boldness and a confidence that rejected all that was happening around them as being no. This is not the will of God. We're, we're going to still worship God. We're going to praise Him, and we're going to pray. And we're going to seek God for the will of God. We're not finished your work yet. We're asking you to just release us from this prison. And God sends an earthquake and literally blows the doors open and sets the captives free. That's incredible. What a great story. And I don't know about you, but there's been times where the devil's led me into a dark uh, place. It's in my head. You know, he's led me into a dark uh, d- dungeon of despair and, uh, uh, you know, doubts and all other words that start with D. And, uh, and, and, and leads you there and it's just like, man, I'm doomed. You know, another D. And uh, I'm doomed and I'm not going anywhere. It's, it's, it's really, and then all of a sudden it's like, man, I'm going to pray. This is not the will of God. This is demonic. 
you know, this is not good. And, and, and you fight it and you resist it and you begin to thank God and praise God and, and, and draw near to God in faith and confidence and boldness. And it's just like, it just like, boom, the, the doors are blown off. And it's like, man, it was, it was dark and dank in there. It was stenchy. It was horrible. It was, you know, it was a bad, I was in a bad place, but God's given me freedom and liberty. Wide open place. And so this is where Paul and Silas find themselves. Their crime was they were going to pray. Their crime was they were telling people about Jesus. Their crime was they cast a demon out of some poor, oppressed slave girl or possessed slave girl. And so we can find ourselves in the darkness sometimes through seemingly no fault of our own. Just by doing, we want to do the will of God. We're not doing anything wrong or bad, but suddenly, man, it's coming against me. Sometimes it can be, you know, we neglected our spiritual disciplines. We neglected the, the word of God. It was a lamp to our feet and we've stumbled into a, into a wrong direction or our relationship with Jesus. Sometimes maybe we've opened the door to sin and, you know, the devil's gained access and gained place in us and he's dry, trying to drive that home. And, you know, there's an assault. But often we're in darkness. Oh, what have I done wrong? Nothing. I'm doing the will of God. But there's good news tonight. Jesus said in Luke 4, 18, the spirit of the Lord's upon me. He is a anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favour has come. We need to have confidence. It's like, I don't think the will of God is that I be oppressed. Mm-hmm. I don't think that the will of God is that I, I just get smashed to the ground and get beaten up and I'm in pain and I'm in darkness and I'm just in, in, in angst and I, I've got no hope and I've got no victory. I don't think that's the will of God at all. And, and it seems like Paul and Silas didn't consider for a moment that, that that was okay, that they were in that place. So I want to finish and look thirdly at light in the darkness. Have you ever woken up on a dark, dark night? Dark night, blackout. It's a blackout. Isn't it incredible when there's no lights? It's like, oh, scary now, isn't it? The wind, you know, the wind's in the fir trees, you know, it's, the rain's beating against the window pane, there's a branch scratching on the window, there's, you know, your toes been left on the edge of the bed as you're trying to find the bathroom, it's like it's, it's all going down and, well, if you just had light there, it's just so easy to navigate with a little bit of light and you're there and you don't have a watch and there's no clock and, you know, you know that dawn will come because it's always come before, you know, usually it's like, that's, I'm just giving you a description of when you go camping. <laughs> it's a great joy for everyone going camping. But you know the dawn's going to come. You know that it's... it's it, but, it, but the night felt like it was about 300 hours long, you know. And, and, you know, the night before when you're just having great fellowship and great food, that was over in a second. <laughs> you know, it's like a whole night, whoosh, it's just gone. And then now, you, now you're there in the dark and you're having dark thoughts and... You know, it's, it's, it's just not, you're not comfortable, you're too cold, you're too hot, whatever. It's just not a good place. And you ever been like that you, and now you're in pain? And you wake up and you're in pain and maybe it's like, man, I think I'm having a heart attack. Or whatever it is, it's like, gee, you know, and, and, and your thoughts and, 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 and it's like, whoa, it's really bad. And, and it's like, it's, it's a deep darkness. And uh, I'm sure that we've all experienced to some degree dark places. In Exodus it talks about darkness which may even be felt. You can feel the darkness. And maybe tonight, I don't know, but maybe you're in a dark place. Maybe the way forward seems dark. Maybe you know someone that's in a dark place. Uh, Can I tell you that uh, there's good news? One thing that I think is a good thing is Jesus knows what it's like. Jesus can relate. He's been tested. He's been tempted in all the things that we face. And Jesus felt the darkness. He was on the cross. And the Bible tells us that there was three hours he was on the cross. There was total darkness. Luke 23, 44. By now it was noon. The whole earth became dark. The darkness lasting three hours. This is the message translation. A total blackout. Temple curtain split right down the middle. Jesus called loudly, Father, I place my life in your hands. And then he breathed his last dark place. John 12, 46. I have come into the world as a light so that 
no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. The word stay means dwell and abide there. God doesn't want you to stay in a dark place. I understand we go through maybe a dark day or a dark season or dark situation, but God doesn't want us to stay. And Jesus says, I've come to bring light. You don't have to stay in that place. You don't have to dwell there. You don't have to live there. And if we find ourselves in a dark place, it's always, according to what the Word of God says, it's going to be a temporary thing. We looked recently at the valley of the shadow of death. That's a dark place. And the Bible says that he'll take us through that. We're not going to stay in that place. Paul knew this. Paul knew the Scriptures. Paul knew Psalm 23. Paul knew that Jesus came and that Jesus said that he's the light of the world and whoever believes in him shouldn't stay in darkness. And it says, around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. They're not shaking their fist. They're they're not in silence. They're not just moaning because they're they're in pain. They've been severely beaten. They're in a dark, stenchy, horrible place. Not a lot of hope going on, I imagine, in that prison, in that dungeon. They're praying and they're singing hymns to God. Praise God. Isn't God good? Like, what, what, do you, what do you want to sing, Silas? Let's sing that song. And they're joined in together. And, and it says the other prisoners are listening and going, what? What's happening in here? You know, the prison keeper is, is I'm sure he's, he, what, what, who are these guys? What, what's happening here? This is not the normal response when people get beaten severely, stripped naked and thrown and, 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 and their feet are put in. They can't even move. They're in stocks. But they had eyes of faith in the dark. They believed in prayer and in worship in the dark. They believed that their life was in God's hands even though they were in a dark place. And we need to see with eyes of faith in the darkness. And think about these guys. They're, they're, they're really going through it. Imagine, you know, Paul's you, you there, Silas? He's just right next to him, but you can't see him. You there, Silas? So you, you want to sing a song? <laughs> you know, what song are we going to sing? Yeah, let's pray, Paul. All right, what do you want to pray about? <laughs> no, they're praying about where they are. They're praying about the situation. They're praying for the prisoners. They're, they're, you know, let's pray for finances. <laughs> you know? But let's pray. God's faithful. Let's believe for a miracle. Let's let's believe for an earthquake. Let's believe for God to set us free in this place. Let's believe that God will do the same thing He did when Peter was in prison. Remember that story. Paul, Silas, they would have been aware of what happened when the church got together and prayed. They said, well, there's two of us, we can pray. And they had other companions and they're, I'm sure, outside and they're they're, they're praying. But thank God they had each other and they were not hanging out with somebody that was super negative and, and super just down on God and super big holes in their faith and didn't build that relationship with God and didn't trust him when the you know the things went dark and thank God though with someone who had faith someone believed that God was able that God was worthy to be worshipped and praised and that God was good thank God for the brethren thank God for people that, that believe thank God for you know a friend thank God for the church people that can be up and positive and you know I've been in church and I've almost been brought to tears as I've seen people that I know are going through a deep dark time and they got their eyes closed and their hands raised and they're singing about the awesomeness of our God and in a sense they're singing in faith they're not singing their praises because they're in a good situation today right now they're going through it, but they still believe that God is worthy, and He is. And their faith, again, it, it attracts God. You're, you know, you, you, you're giving Cornelius has uh, uh, been noticed by God. You, you know, your, your prayers are like incense coming up before God. God can smell them, and He can smell the complaints. Of it, you know, He can smell what, what what we're sending up to Him, and God sees and hears the worship and the prayers of these men, and you know. They're filled with perspective. There's no light there. The lamp of the body is the eye, and the eye gives us some perspective, and we see some things, and our eyes register light. With light is what our eyes, you know, um, are operating under. And and but these men, uh, it says, if your eyes bad, you'll be filled with darkness. But these eyes, these men's eyes are good. They have eyes of faith, even in the dark. They can see God, even in the dark. In a spiritual sense, and they have eyes of faith, and 
Elisha cries out, open his eyes, Lord, about his buddy who is blind to spiritual truth and spiritual possibilities. Open his eyes. He's in darkness. He can't see. The Bible says, walk by faith and not by sight. We do ourselves and God a disservice when we just so zero in on the problems and so magnify the problems that the, 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 the darkness of the, the, the situations of light just so affect us and so choke our faith. Paul begins to give thanks in all things. I believe God's going to turn it for good. Yeah, me too. Let's pray. Let's sing. Let's, let's you know. He began to be anxious for nothing. I could go through and quote all the things that Paul tells us. Oh, what about you, Paul? Paul believed it. Paul lived it. Paul put it into play when he needed to. He began to sing and pray. His eyes were good. He could still see God in the dark. And that's, in a sense, what this message is about. We've got to be able to see God in the dark. And because they saw him in the dark, they got to see him in the light again. And Silas... As I mentioned, he wasn't a negative guy. His name means lover of words. And so maybe he was a talkative fellow, you know. <laughs> maybe he was Mr. Have a chat. It's Silas, you know, he just talks all the time. But here, here at least he chooses not to complain or to whine, but to respond in faith. Because words have got the power of life and death. The other prisoners are listening and other people are listening to us. They're listening to us when things go a bit dark. They're listening to our prayer or lack of prayer, our worship or our lack of worship, our complaint or our lack of complaint. They, they, people see. And, and they're, they're fellow prisoners. And in a sense, we're all prisoners in this life and in this world. But Jesus came to set the captive free. Mm -hmm. came to give us hope and give us life. And we can influence others by our response. So Jesus is there in our darkest times, in the midst of the darkness. And in our text, God does something truly miraculous. Suddenly, there was a massive earthquake. The prison was shaken to its foundation and all the doors immediately flew open and the chains of every prisoner fell off. Earthquake can't do that. You know, some of the prison might collapse on them and kill them. <laughs> You know, and, and if it's heavy enough that, that you know it's affecting the, how the doors are, it's like the doors aren't, it's, they're not all going to open. And particularly the chains aren't going to fall off. It doesn't matter how big the earthquake is, the, the, the chains won't fall off unless the earth opens and you fall 100 foot. It's, it's, not, it's a miracle of God. There was an earthquake and it did do damage in the prison, but it was a, a, a God quake. It was, it was the Holy Spirit quake. It was angels coming in. It was, it was a spiritual situation. The jailer, he called for lights and ran into the dungeon and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Why Paul and Silas? Because they were the men. Because they were the guys with faith. They were the guys who were singing and praising and, and praying to God. They were the guys who knew what was going on. And he and he realised, it's like, what 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 the heck? I, I know what these guys are about. They're these Christian guys and they have faith in their God. And this is proven to me their God is more than abundantly real. And how do I get saved? And he was so convinced and so convicted that he got saved. And so maybe as they walk out of the prison, maybe there was a point to all that. <laughs> No, that's why it happened. Maybe it's not that God doesn't care, or maybe it's not that the devil must be too strong. Maybe God was planning something powerful all along. And God takes us and allows us to, you know, go into difficult situations wanting to bring out some powerful miracle and show us how powerful and how real he is many times. But unless we look for him in the dark, unless we draw near to him in the dark, we can miss out on that. So maybe God's planning to do something powerful in your situation. Trust Him. Pray. Praise Him anyway. And see what it is that He will do. Let's bow our heads before God. Let's bow our heart before God. What a powerful portion of Scripture. What a powerful story. And we've adapted it to make it, you know, let it speak into our circumstance. But it can speak into our circumstance. There's a, there's a spiritual realm. There's people doing the will of God. There's people in bondage to the devil. There's people even possessed by demons. There's people that are slaves. 
in this world. There's angry mobs that don't understand, and they they they, they hate. They hate on the church. They hate on those those uh, you know b- believers and those people trying to witness. And there, there's all these people we see all these scenarios in today. There's those that would lock us up and throw away the key. The devil wants to do that, and he wants to do it through circumstance, through constraints, through dark times, dark situations. And there's God the whole time, who has a plan and a purpose who allows the the spiritual battle to go on for a season. God brings an end to it all at the end, but he allows things for a reason. He has a purpose. And Paul and Silas believed him. They believed him for good. They believed that he was good. They believed that he was worthy. And they were going to praise him and they were going to pray even if they didn't get out of there that night. They just believed God for good things. They didn't immediately panic when the mob turned up. They didn't immediately panic when they they, they, they were beaten. They, they didn't panic when they were arrested. They didn't panic when they were put into the in a dungeon. They just said, yeah, God knows what he's doing. And uh, there's some things I can't fight my way out of. And I'm just going to have to trust God. Thank God we can trust him in the dark as well as in the light. And many times that's when we really, really need him because in the light we can sort of function. Thank God for his faithfulness, the faithfulness of God. Thank God for the example of Paul and Silas' faithfulness to believe God. For God's good all the time. What a wonderful God. I want to give you an opportunity, you're uh, tuned in on the live stream, I want to give you an opportunity to pray a, a prayer. It's a salvation prayer. It's a prayer where we turn from our sin and we receive the forgiveness of God that God has made available to us because Jesus died for our sins on Calvary's cross 2,000 years ago. The Bible says if you believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and you confess him, you'll be saved. God wants to convince you that he's real, that Jesus is real, that he has authority and dominion over every power of darkness. All authority in the spiritual realm is in Jesus' hands. He that's in us, that's Christ, that's the Holy Spirit, greater than the devil and, and his minions. Thank God for the power of Jesus in our life. You can pray right now a simple prayer to receive Jesus Christ, forgiveness and cleansing from sin. Maybe you have spiritual issues. Maybe you have great darkness situation. Maybe there's demonic stuff happening in your life. Maybe there's dark nights and you know you need help. You need Jesus. You need Jesus in your life. And you can pray right now and receive Christ into your life. I'm going to lead you in a very simple prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to pray this prayer. You can pray it out loud. You can repeat these words. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you've sent Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. I know I'm a sinner. I repent of my sins and I receive Jesus' forgiveness and I receive Jesus as my Lord and Saviour. Jesus, come into my life. I want to do your will. Amen. Wonderful God. Lord, I pray God touching people right now, God, that have prayed this prayer. Oh, Father, we thank you. There's light in the darkness. There's faith in the darkness. There's a need for us to pray in the darkness and maybe sometimes the darkness that we pray in is somebody else's we see their situation and we we walk in and we go into battle for them we pray because the enemy has somehow got them bound he somehow got them in in a dark place he's got them in a in a in a constraint and we want to pray that they would be released just like the story with peter they're praying peter's being held in prison but the the church is praying fervently god do a miracle god release God shook things in that story as well and brought freedom for the captive. I want to give you an opportunity to pray tonight. I invite you to come and spend some time in prayer. We want to pray at all times. We should always pray and not give up. We should always 
pray and make a difference in our life because we believe who God is, because we develop an understanding of him through his word. We understand him through our prayer and through our life. We understand who he is so that when the, the darkness comes, we're not freaked out and overwhelmed and, and, and questioning God. In fact, we're going, no, we're not questioning you, God. We're, we're asking you. We're seeking you. We're believing you. Let's pray for our city. Let's pray for our community. Let's pray for our families. Let's pray for backsliders. Let's pray that they would be released, the enemies taken people captive to do his will. Is holding people in bondage as different types of bondage. Name the area of bondage. Break it in Jesus' name. Bind it in Jesus' name. Take authority in Jesus' name. Pray. Invite the Holy Spirit. Invite ministering angels. Invite the presence of God. Invite people to come. Invite circumstance to be changed. Command it. Speak it. Believe it. Let's take time and pray. Father, we just believe you, God. For dominion, God, in our city, for breakthrough, God, people held in captive by the enemy. God, we want to pray for churches in this city. God, we want to pray for breakthrough. God, we want to pray for people, God, believers, God, that are held in bondage to sins, Father God. We want to pray for breakthrough in churches. We want to pray, God, that God, that your people would rise up and pray, Lord God. Father, as we go through our dark times in, in a way in our society and people with sickness, all the different things, God, that people go through, God, we pray, God, that people would turn to the light, that the light of Christ would be lifted up in our city. God, bring breakthrough in our life, in our faith, God, that we would pray, Lord God, that we would worship you anytime, Lord God. We'd be filled with hope. We'd be filled with your Holy Spirit. God, we thank you for your goodness. God, we thank you what you're doing, Lord. God, in our loved ones, God, in people that we know, God, Backsliders, Lord God, we thank you what you're doing.
wonderful. We're praying for light in the darkness. Wonderful, God. Your prayers, my prayers, we make a difference. We really, really do. Encouraging that. I want to encourage you this week, if you can um, focus on getting an act together for the Red Faces Night and bringing somebody along. Pray about that. Encourage us. Pray about that. God, what can I do? Because you can do something. And who can I invite? You can invite somebody. And so I encourage you to pray about that. Let the Holy Spirit lead you in that and, uh, and give you success in that. Praise God. We're going to close off in a word of prayer. Appreciate you joining with us on the live stream. Pre- appreciate you coming here to be part of our service in the building tonight. And get me to pray. Close us off in a word of prayer. Thanks, Mick. Father God, we thank you that you are the light in the darkness, God, that no matter what situation we're in in life, no matter what the circumstance is, God, that you are always there for us, God, that you are always there ready to um, set us free, God, and to give us a future and a hope, God, and all that you have planned for us. God, I pray that you would be with us uh, as we go and bring us back safely for the next service. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week. God bless.